welcome to the session greeting of the day in today's class we are going to see about uh, the uh, non destructive testing types in previous classes uh, we have seen about regarding the different type of uh, non destructive testings like uh, radiography uh, liquid uh, dependent inspections ultrasonic testings and various things on that importantly we are going to discuss uh, in the upcoming classes about magnetic particle testing it means we have already seen such various uh, categories we have divided uh, in such a format of uh, volumetric defects and the non volumetric uh, defects this you can able to see here that we have divided such as surface cracks and the volumetric planar inspection cracks it means the name itself says that here it belong to surface cracks on the specimen the surface crack is going to be on the surfaces only so that uh, our main aim is to find the defect and also to prevent the defect and to avoid the component a failure failuring component to get into the service so that we are going to avoid that is our main aim of our uh, ndt non destructive testings so the crack or defect may be in the surface or may be in the subsurface subsurface means uh, uh, into the thickness of the specimen so i have dividing into two categories maybe of the uh, surface or maybe of the subsurface i have given here uh, uh, there are uh, uh, surface cracks i have divided into uh, four categories of number 1 of uh, visual inspection and number 2 of uh, liquid penetrant test and three of magnetic particle testing and the fourth one of eddy current testing so our uh, uh, interest of study is on the third one magnetic particle testing which we are going to see now there are other things are also there such as a volumetric it means uh, where uh, the, the word volumetric represents the ultrasonic and the radiography can able to do into the thickness the volume so that is what it is mentioning and also the planar uh, surface so that uh, uh, volumetric ultrasonic and radiography only possible and the surface the remaining four are possibility is there each technique has its own advantages and also the disadvantages with respect to their uh, technical capability and their its cost one thing we should remember the choice of ndt technique it means whether it is a surface we are going to choose a choice out of this four whether it is a subsurface out of this two we are going to take any one of the choice it is based upon our uh, uh, considerations a thickness or a, a cost wise our ability to get in touch with the specimens it means uh, uh, the component should go inside nearer to the specimens and then we have to do the inspection so based upon those things we are going to select the same liquid penetrant inspection what it does on the surface magnetic particle inspection can also able to do but there is a small difference uh, between it the, the name itself says it is a, a magnetic particle inspection it means uh, the material which we are going to inspect to be a ferromagnetic material but that is not the case in the liquid penetrant inspection so such a differences a technical compatibility and cost wise we are going to uh, choose the methods but we, are, we should know what are the methods what are its working principles 
based upon that we are going to select so totally 78 types are there one by one we will move so this is what uh, i have told you this is what i have told you there in the uh, a total uh, list you can see a non descriptive texting techniques i have given the popular uh, eight types right? uh, that is a uh, uh, visual a uh, liquid content testings or uh, maybe a magnetic particle that is what we are going to see today's uh, interest uh, upcoming classes um, interest and maybe the eddy current testings radiography are there ultrasonic testings are there and also the acoustic emissions and the infrared thermographies are there so now we are going to see about uh, this magnetic particle testing out of this eight already we told you that this method is the one of the surface defect defining method we will go on by one see magnetic particle testing it is a non destructive testing as i told you we are defining this method as a non destructive testing as because we are not going to uh, break the sample we are not going to break the sample or disturb or giving force nothing we are doing but in case of uh, other tensile impact hardness testing you could you could have understood that we are going to give some force to break the samples destroying the samples but that we are not doing here therefore we are calling this magnetic particle inspection or testing as a non destructive samples we are not going to disturb non destructive testing but even though we are going to find the quality of the specimen how we are finding the quality it means we are want to neglect the crack obviously the quality increases so we want to find and remove repair otherwise we should stop formation of cracks by doing engineering things the precautions we should do it does not mean it, it will prevent we should avoid we should neglect we should take efforts by doing inspections and we should stop those formations by doing engineering things so you see it is one kind of testing uh, process for detecting as as i told you as i told you see for detecting surface cracks mainly it is on the surface cracks but uh, as it is having a magnetic property it can able to do somehow somehow subsurface it can go able to do some shallow subsurface this kind of case but i have listed the same thing in the not in the subsurface so this one is subsurface this one is subsurface but i have not uh, defining this magnetic particle here because uh, it is mainly importantly utilized for surface finding defects therefore uh, but it is a shallow uh, a little bit as it is having the magnetic power somehow it is able to indicate uh, give indications on the shallow subsurface also shallow means near near surface shallow means uh, near surface defects we will we'll go ahead it is a uh, one kind of testing process uh, for detecting a surface and also the subsurface in a ferromagnetic material such as maybe the iron or maybe the nickel or maybe the cobalt maybe a combination of this alloy systems so importantly we are understanding that uh, it should not be a paramagnetic it should not be a diamagnetic it should be a paramagnetic material it should be a paramagnetic material you see a uh, two images uh, are available uh, here it means uh, we are going to use a method where our visibility by naked eye is this first image when we are viewing it is a uh, crack is not visible you see here the crack is available this zone this zone in this zone the crack is available 
Here the crack is available, but it is not visible to us. See, by doing the inspection, after doing magnetic particle inspections over the specimen, that is what the name, magnetic particle. Magnetic particle over the specimen, we are putting over, uh, we are putting some magnetic particles over there and creating magnetic field there. We will see the process principles. Yeah, by that, it is uh, magnetic particles are accumulated at a line where the defect, where the crack, where the leakage of magnetic field is there. So, we can able to uh, find easily these things. See, the crack is uh, formed. So, you have to, very, very simple method out of uh, all these eight methods, it is very simple. One by one, we will go the history. You see, in the earlier days also, they have found the defect. But how they have found, uh, they have, by naked eye, we have, we, have, we have understood, and then visual inspections, or dye particle inspections, so multiple are there. This magnetic particle inspections they have invented uh, in the year uh, around 1868. Uh, it's known use of magnetizing to inspect an object that took place as early as 1868. The cannon barrels were checked for defects by the magnetizing the barrel, then sliding a magnetic compass along the barrel length. So that is how they have used some magnetic uh, a compass uh, when the field comes or when the leakage of magnetic comes uh, uh, through the uh, crack indications, it should, uh, um, compass will indicate by uh, field absorptions, attractions. So that is how they started their inspections, they started their invent inventions uh, by simple compass method. In early 1930s, you see in early 1930s, the magnetic particle inspections were quickly replaced. Not with the campus, uh, some particles like uh, oils, because uh, the particles when we are spraying, it is accumulated at a single point. It is powder, solid dry powder. It is not a liquid, it cannot flow over the surfaces. Therefore, they converted this uh, uh, dry powders in the way of oil or water or liquid uh, to flow over the samples. When it is flowing over the samples uniformly, we will get the uniform thickness of uh, a particle which we are spraying over there. And also, it is floating equally. All zones are covered quickly. A large surface, a large volume can be covered. So that is why from the dry powders, uh, particle methods, we are, we are going to see the principles and the upcoming slides. That are replaced, the, the first initially the compass is replaced by the oils, the liquids or maybe the whitener methods. As the method of a choice in the railway systems or railway industries, they are using this to inspect maybe the steam engine boilers, maybe the wheels, maybe the axles, maybe the tracks, in the uh, started with uh, 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 railroads. So, these are the first initial preliminary use of this uh, magnetic particle test. So, that is what I have given here, maybe the steams, maybe the wheels, axles or tracks are used in the railroads by using in 1930s with respect to some replacing of this oils and white waters. This magnetic particle inspection, MPI, is very fast and relatively easy to apply. As because it is a liquid form or maybe the powder form, yeah, anything maybe. So, may, uh, as per our need, we may use the dry powders. If it is a volume of a small area, we are going to inspect. Or maybe we can use the iron particles suspended in the waters. So any maybe water particle suspension inspections or dry particle inspections. In those two methods, you can use the magnetic particle inspection methods. The MPI is very fast. 
and relatively easy to apply and the part surface preparation is not as critical as it is for some other unit methods. Why it is the part surface is not critical? Part surface is nothing but you see surface and the uh, top surface where we are going to do inspection. So that surface is uh, we are using magnetic particles. Even we, are, we will do the painting to avoid corrosion on all the materials. We know that this paint will act as an insulator also. That we remember. It may act as an insulator also. But even though we can able to, uh, there is a limit, a 0 0.05 mm. Up to that, the paint can will permit the magnetic field inside this paint. Therefore, we are we no need to remove the paints. So such a uh, part preparation is very simple. But even though uh, these oils, grease, or any dust particles which are uh, present there, it should be removed. That is a formal. But uh, other than that, uh, uh, very simple method. So that is why MP is very fast, relatively easy to apply, and the part surface preparation is not as critical as it is for the other NDT method. What we are doing the other NDT methods, the liquid filtering testing method, we have to clean the surfaces properly and red color paint, red color penetrants or developers which is applied already to be cleaned properly. Those all methods are not implemented here. It's very quick. To detect a flaws in the specimen, it uses only uh, two things. Number one, as a magnetic field. First, we are going to create the field. Definitely, wherever the crack is available, on that uh, this magnetic field leakage will be there. So let us assume we have a sample here. And we have a crack also here available. So when we understand that this uh, passing of magnetic field will be in one direction, like this passing of current will be in this one direction. At uh, non-defect surfaces, when there is a defect, when there is a defect, you see, here the leakages will come and forms like this. It, it will jump here one end to another as it is attacking takes place. So here we are going to sprinkle or spray this magnetic particles. So what happens? Here uh, uh, will be uniform at, uh, at all the surfaces. Where there is a crack, those surfaces will attract more, will attract more the particles at the one point. That is what we have seen in the first slide image, you see. In the first slide image it is attracted at a one point here. Because there is a crack, there is a field leakage, we are putting magnetic particles, definitely magnetic field will attract those magnetic particles and accumulate at a one end. So that is the easiest method to identify uh, the cracks. So therefore, uh, the two things uh, we are expecting to do uh, in this uh, uh, magnetic particle inspection, one is we need a field, that means uh, field creating equipments we are going to use, and next one is magnetic particles, the small micro particles. Uh, uh, here itself, it is given it is a ion fillings powders. So, it may be a, a wet particle inspection methods, it means a liquid uh, spraying method, otherwise, it may be the a dry powder spray method also. So any any method we can we can able to use. But uh, those are two things needed. So uh, for applying we need sprays. For creating magnetic field we need maybe the, um, the probes or yokes or current supplying equipments. Those we uh, those things we need, which can be portable also. Small micro small equipments are there in nowadays. So I say. The method is used to inspect a variety of products, a variety of products from including a day to day we are uh, using the various industries like uh, castings, maybe the forgings, maybe the weldings. Importantly on welds, importantly on welds we are getting nugget joints, uh, fillet joints or maybe the undercuts or maybe the subsurface uh, 
unfilled uh, hidden zones uh, those things we have to detect which are formed from the surfaces so normally on the castings and forgings many different industries are using the magnetic particle inspections many industries which that is what the casting industries or maybe the forging industries or maybe the welding industries any uh, this is what uh, our uh, mechanical field coverage is uh, we are expecting uh, defect free product to be delivered if the defect free product to be delivered means we should do multiple inspections in one, the way only we can find the failed product is through inspection only then how if we are not doing inspections as it is we will create the product we will deliver as it is we will create the product we will deliver we don't know whether the product is uh, came good or bad or with error error can be rectified but damage cannot be rectified it's a failure failure should not occur error, error will be there that we have to reduce so many different industries are using magnetic particle inspections for determining a component of fitness for the use fitness for the use is nothing but a defect free component we are going to use those things so you see here are few things we have to understand here we have a sample it means the sample may contain a north pole and also the south pole this sample is not having are not having a no defect is available here but at the same time when there is a defect when there is a crack let us assume we have a crack here let us assume we have a crack then what happens this act as a two samples you see this is going to act as a two samples here we have uh, one sample at the same time a nearby i again one more time i am giving the another sample this is one but at left side we have a, a north pole on the sample because it is a magnetizing paramagnetic material so here also we will have a, a south pole at the, at the at the similarly here one north pole and here one south pole so here one south pole will be formed so such cases uh, uh, creates a field attractions over here if it is a, a crack so the domain the magnetic flux domain will be in one direction when it is formed there it will be in the one direction you see it will be here like this at a, at a, at a uniform point uh, at a no crack point there will be at a uniform flow magnetic flux lines will be there but when there is a crack i told you this is a crack already now we are understanding this is the a uh, crack point so this is the crack point here the, the gap is there but the crack is there so flux leakage will happen and therefore we we will have some attraction first north to south already this is will be there like this or maybe like this right and uh, north to south so what happens the flow is in one direction and we are having the field which is in the another direction which is perpendicular perpendicular direction is available so what happens here when the leakage is there it, it as usual it will go into jump here so this happens so this is how we understood this a uh, uh, field of attraction so the the same thing we will we will do here also you see principles of magnetic particle inspection the main principle is based upon magnetic flux leakage you see there uh, the word magnetic flux leakage in simple we call this as a uh, mfl magnetic flux leakage the magnetic moments in a ferromagnetic material the magnetic moment in a ferromagnetic material have the tendency to become aligned parallel to become 
aligned parallel you see a magnetic moment we are creating and therefore a ferromagnetic metal have the tendency ferromagnetic material particles we are spraying at the same time we are using a magnetic ferromagnetic materials only so if not it won't work if it is not a ferromagnetic material this inspection method will not be useful so magnetic moment in a ferromagnetic material have a tendency to become aligned parallel aligned parallel to each other under the influence of the magnetic field so this is what number one we have we have told you magnetic field creation at the at this point you see magnetic field creation so and then we have to put the second one small magnetic particle that also we will see now you see a magnetic moment in the ferromagnetic material has a tendency to become aligned parallel to each other under influence of magnetic field however unlike the moments of a paramagnet these moments will then be remained parallel when the magnetic field is on or not applied first we are applying the field first we are applying the field field is generated it become parallel then what happens you see when the field is off this alignment also will become not disturbed but is still in the parallel conditions only therefore we should do demagnetization process at the end of the experiment after doing the inspection we have to do uh, a demagnetization technique that we will see some two to three methods are there how we are going to demagnetize the material so that is also we should uh, see after completing the procedures and principles so this phenomenon is observed below a critical temperatures in this experiment we are not going to heat the samples just the sample kept we are going to do inspection by passing the flow current at pole south pole magnetic field generated perpendicular and the crack whatever are uh, available perpendicular to the magnetic field we are going to identify very simple method so this phenomenon is observed below a critical temperature generally we are calling it as a, a curic temperature Above which the material behaves as a paramagnetic material. So you see, when the when the temperature is increasing, obviously the paramagnetic material is becoming a paramagnet, and therefore it is a, a, a reduction uh, in the magnetic is getting changed. So the main principle is this uh, that uh, it should be a ferromagnet. You see the images, the top one, uh, the first image here. Uh, when the magnetic flux lines are in straight, there is not a disturbed one. But at the same time, but at the same time, you see, when I am doing, when I am doing this, uh, um, a crack available specimen, when we are taking this uh, crack available specimen, what happens here? It's, it it behaves like a, a two specimen. It behaves like a two specimen. It means uh, uh, north one side, south one side. At the same time, when the crack away, again the north and south are, are uh, uh, comes in between. So here you see, uh, it, it is has a south and north. So what happens again? The more attraction north to south uh, will be uh, formed, and also the leakage also available here, as like uh, it is a, a leakage point uh, with respect to. Uh, air influences with respect to air influences. Now we have to put there uh, this uh, uh, magnetic particles there. We have discussed here uh, as a as a two points. Uh, as two points, you see like this uh, uh, magnetic field and the particles. So the magnetic field creates the straight, and when there is a crack, there is a leakage. Now we are wanted to make it as a uh, field creations see when a homogeneous ferromagnetic material when a homogeneous ferromagnetic material is placed in the magnetic field it is get magnetized and forms a continuous circuit of pole to pole nothing but a, a south to north through the material if any surface or any surface 
or the subsurface, you see, any surface or the subsurface in this country is present there, it should be, we should remember it should be perpendicular. Then only it is uh, uh, strongly uh, understood. Otherwise, uh, the flow of lines will be in this direction, crack also in this direction. It is not possible to uh, influence the uh, field direction. Blo blocking should happen. Then only it is possible to understand the flow or not received. If any surface or subsurface discernment is present, the magnetic flux leakage out of the material. Since the air cannot support as much as magnetic field per unit volume of these metals. So what happens as it leaks, a magnetic flux will collect the ferromagnetic particles, generally the ion powder, so you can know. So what happened? This is what uh, uh, we have we have talked earlier in the second one. One number one is nothing but a magnetic field. Number two is nothing but a, a small magnetic particles or maybe the ion fillings. So that is what number two second one in itself we understood. We have applied here. So as it leaks, magnetic flux will collect ferromagnetic particles, generally the ion powders, making the various maybe the any sizes or shapes or discontinuities can be easily visible. How it is easily visible? At whatever shape it is, the crack will be like this or crack will be in the V shape. Uh, these particles is going to fill here. These particles are going to fill here. This gap. Or maybe the crack is like this. Or can maybe the crack is in the square form. The, crack, the particles we are going to fill here. This is what we have seen in the very first slide. In the very first slide we have seen, you see, uh, that uh, actual images. This is the actual images. You see, here it is not visible, but the crack is available at this point. And therefore, when we are filling the powders, it is attracted and accumulated at one point. And the powder is in red color. The ion particles are in red color. Maybe in, in any color. We can able to use. So this is how this uh, uh, magnetic particle inspection works. So there are. Uh, uh, steps are there, the procedures. We have already seen the working principle. It is based upon the magnetic flux leakage and absorptions and attractions of these particles on the uh, crack defects. But even though uh, some procedures we are wanted to understand like uh, uh, part preparations, magnetic field applications, this is what now we have discussed as a principle and the application of magnetic particle and uh, at last we have to do inspection. And even though I told you one point is we have to do a demagnetization methods. So this uh, procedures we will see uh, one by one uh, as we have to discuss. So this is how we can able to understand. So as of today, in our class, you know, these lectures we have seen about uh, the introductory part of uh, magnetic particle inspections, which is uh, one of the method of uh, uh, a non destructive testing. We have seen an introduction and about the history and about the uh, working principle of, uh, of the magnetic particle testing is nothing but a magnetic flux leakages. MFR. The remaining part of the subjects we will see you in the next session. Thank you.